Thank you for staying with us on The Pulse. Time now for The Sport. I'm Gary Al Smith. And even in the throes of COVID-19, we still have our football for now. You could tell from the president's tone yesterday that what he said about the football was just a warning. And it was because a day before um, the president spoke, that's on Saturday, Hearts of Folk and Accra Great Olympics played a spectacular game of football. But off the pitch, in the stands, it wasn't so great. And so we're all hoping that everybody will adhere to the protocols. But let's come to the game proper. The star of the show was Glatzen Awako, Great Olympics key man. And he's secured an impressive 2-0 win together with his mate against Hearts of Folk in what has become known as the Manche Derby at the Accra Stadium. Olympics, what it means is that they are now third on the table with 18 points. Hearts are fourth with 16. They still have just a little bit of difference between them. And we'll talk about Olympics now with my colleague, Mubarak Haruna, uh, who has been following them from pre-season until now. He joins us via video call. Haruna, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Yeah. First of all, I mean, I recall the reports you did about Olympics in pre-season. With 11 days to go, heading, uh, with 11 days gone, going into the 12, do you feel vindicated? Well, yeah, I think so, because Great Olympics is a team that I've monitored, not even in pre-season, but in catered season. I monitored them closely, and when you look at things were not going on well in the truncated league. And when, what they did was to put in a conscious effort of recruiting players who want to stake a claim for themselves, players who want to make a name for themselves. So this time around, the coach and his technical team did, I'm referring to the indisposed Anna Walker. So he did the scouting with his technical team. He brought in so many players. They did their trials and and they passed, and that is what we, the, the, that's what we are seeing now. They are playing so well because they want to prove their critics wrong. You've used an apt word for Anna Walker when you say he's indisposed because he's been around. Uh, he's not been around due to illness. However, it's been interesting that contrary to what many people would expect, with the coming of two new coaches, nothing has changed in the system at Great Olympics. Why do you think there has been so much continuity? considering that Yao Kun was not even part of the setup when I, I not, Walker was there, Mubarak. Yeah, it's, it was part of the decision of management to appoint Yao Kun because they made it clear to him that they need a coach who will continue, who more or less guide what Anna Walker has done. And that is what exactly Yao Kun is doing. They wanted a coach because they knew that Anna Walker was doing so, so well. It's the same place. They don't like a system where a new coach will come in and he wants to test new players, new systems, new philosophies. No, they don't want that way. They don't have time to test. What they want is results. They've already set their target. Their target is to be in the top five come the end of the season. So your approach is just continuing what Anna Walker started. And when you look at the lineup of Great Olympic, it's the same from the, from the goalkeeper to the number nine striker. It's the same players, the same system, and more or less, same substitutions as well, Gary. Yeah. So we, we have something on our slug right now, you know, saying that Olympics are the landlords of Accra because they've beaten all the teams who are based in Accra, Inter Allies, Ligon Cities, Asante Kotoko. Uh, they've, they've all been beaten by Accra Great Olympics. Now, what do you think is the feeling like in the Olympics dressing room? What's the next step for them, considering... Honestly, they'll feel like they have surpassed their target for the season with, with 11 games gone, won't they? Not at all, not at all, Gary. Great Olympics, they, like I said, they are aiming to be part of the top five come the end of the season. Remember when Anna Walker got ill, they went a run of two games with losses. Yeah. And because of that, they, they are not complacent at all. They've made it clear, the board has made it clear to the players that they need to be in the top five because they struggled for a while. Great Olympics, they are a traditional club. And if people don't know, apart from Asante Kotoko, Accra House of Folk, and Ashanti Gold, Great Olympics have more Premier League titles than any other team in the Ghana Premier League. Exactly. No team has more, apart from the three teams I've mentioned. So they are a club built to boost, built to brag on their achievements. And I'm not surprised. In derbies like this, when they are facing their opponents, 
in Accra here, they play above themselves because they always want to be ahead with regards to the bragging rights, Gary. Yeah, and as you speak, the table for the Ghana Premier League has just flashed onto the screen. It's very, very tight. So tight that the team at the top has 21 points, but the team in ninth, that's Elmina Sharks, have 15 points. Just, what, six points between them, meaning that should any team, including Great Olympics, be a bit complacent, they can slip very, very quickly. This is where I want to ask you, how deep is their squad to go the entire season with this momentum? Great Olympics, they are not targeting the title, number one. Number two, there's no pressure on the team to qualify for any African competition whatsoever. So the players are playing in a relaxed way. Now, talking about the, their depth in squad, they've signed about 11 players. People, so many players. They've signed about 11 players. And I can tell you, they have more players, more quality players on the bench that people are not previewed to. Mm. The reason is that they've got their first 11. And like we always say, you don't change a winning team. And that is why we are seeing them sticking to the same first 11. In the game against Accra House of Hope, their dependable right back, Paul Philip Saki, was suspended due to an accumulation of yellow cards. Yeah. They quickly brought in Ebenezer Seture to come and play at right back, and he did so, so well. In that particular game, their dependable centre-back as well, called Matthew Dunga, got injured, and they brought in Zakaria Hamza, and they were able to keep a clean sheet. So they've got so many quality and proficient players on the bench that people are not previewed to. And for me, as time goes on, we will see the real quality of Great Olympics. Right. We are seeing the second goal here where siblings, so the number four you see on the shot, cross the ball to his brother who hits the ball into the back of the net. Tell us about them. Well, the, 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 their partnership have been superb. Anytime first of all, first of all you know the them. names they use. It has a, are they biological brothers? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. They are. I'm not quite sure who is the eldest, but Maxwell Abbey and then the, their full name is the, the guy who scored the goal. The second goal is called Maxwell Abbey. Yes. He usually plays as a striker, as a left winger, and his brother is Samuel Abbey. So they are brothers. And when I, whenever you visit them at the training grounds, they always practice together. They, want, they wanted to form this particular formidable partnership. And I'm not surprised that I'm seeing it in, in games. I'm not surprised at all, to be very honest. And that is what they want to do. They always want to, and they always enjoy playing with their targets man called Manan Mudasiru. Yeah. When you visit them at training ground, that's what you see because he's someone that is very strong, very powerful. So, and because they are runners, because they have pace, they feed off him quickly. His strength, he's able to draw two center halves close to him and the spaces that he will leave behind, that is where Abby and Maxwell will exploit. I'm not surprised about their very good understanding of the pitch at all, Gary. So finally, we know Olympics are playing tomorrow. Um, they are not having a any respite, they played on Saturday, they play again tomorrow. Have you had a peek into what's going on in their dressing room, inside their camp? Have they come down from the cloud nine after beating their rivals? Yes, yes, Gary, they, they, they have. And their, their coach has made it clear to them that their, the next game is always the most important game. It does not matter about the victory today. You need to win your next game to put you in a comfortable, to put you in the driving seat in order to let you not to be complacent. So it is, it's, the message is very clear from your prayer code, Ole Lickenstein and, of course, Gordina Trump. So they are not complacent at all. The mood is over. They are looking forward to the game against Kim Faisal, especially seeing what Kim Faisal did at Chelsea on Friday. They, 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 are so, they are ready to go actually for this game. Nice one. Thank you, Bubarak Haruna of the Joy Sports team. We'll be getting more from him as time goes on, especially as Great Olympics are doing well this season. Remember, Olympics have a slew of records or a slew of impressive statistics to their name. Their goalkeeper has uh, conceded the least number of goals in terms of the clean sheets than any other goalkeeper in the season as well. Um, Glatton Awako currently has scored the second highest number of free kicks in the Ghana Premier League. Olympics have picked more points on the road than any other team in the Ghana Premier League. 10 points, more than Hearts, more than Kotoko, more than anybody else. They really are the wonder club, aren't they? Anyway, that's the sport for now. We'll be bringing you more later on Joy News Prime with Israel Laie and the rest of the gang. I'm Gary Al Smith. Thank you for the time.